Hey everybody, my name is Tyler with Kirchhoff Leatherworks out of Curtis, Nebraska. Uh, today what we're gonna do is go through the process that I use um, for building a pair of rodeo chefs. Um, what I've done is I've already built and finished one of the legs. Uh, that way you can kind of see, kind of see where we're headed with this. Um, what I used was the gaucho side through Tandy in black. It comes in a three to four ounce. Uh, Kind of keeps them lightweight. It's got a really nice soft feel to it. Um, the Mirage metallic side, uh, we went with copper. I thought black and copper would be a really classy look for this. Uh, did about a 12 inch double fringe on there. And the yokes and the leg panels are out of their old world veg tan side, which came in a four to five ounce. Um, kind of kept them a little on the lighter weight side without making them big and bulky, uh, but we still got some body there. So, um, being that this is not a, a tooling video per se, um, went ahead and got them cut out and carved in, but did a bit of filigree with them so that copper would show through and, and uh, give it that extra flashy look. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bounce over here in a second and I'll kind of go through my measurement process. Um, I just use my own measurements for these. Um, taking those measurements, putting them down on paper so we can get our pattern and transfer that over to the other leg and get started on that. So we're gonna kind of switch gears here just a little bit, um, get those measurements out and roll our paper out and show you kind of how we lay that down or how I lay that down. I know everybody does things a little bit different. Um, this is what works for me um, and I hope it's uh, helpful to somebody else out there. So in one second, we'll, we'll be back. All right, this is, uh, this is the measurement sheet that I use. Um, kind of base it off of an, another guy's, um, tweak some things, change some things around. This gets me everything that I need when measuring out for a pair of shafts, chinks, um, you know, go through and circle that, whether we're doing shotguns, bat wings, rodeo shafts, shell shafts, um, top grain rough out, you know, your body color, fringe color, all these extra details. I left my spot for some notes over here if I've got anything, you know, if we're doing floral and basket weave combo on the yokes and if we're doing cuffs on the bottom and lacing in zippers or whatever, um, obviously we don't have to worry about any of that with these rodeo chefs. Um, this is the important stuff here. So we've got a waist measurement, waist to thigh, or waist to upper thigh, your upper thigh measurement. All these things are crucial to get a pair of shafts to fit or a pair of chinks. Um, I know this isn't really a shaft building video per se um, on how to lay out your measurements and whatnot. Um, but what we're going to do is I got this all laid out on a big piece of butcher paper is what I use because I buy it by a big roll and yeah, I cut it up in the process. So I've already got that laid out on the paper. Um, I'm going to flip the phone around here in a second and show you how I've got it laid out and kind of tell you my process from there. Okay, I know what you're thinking already. What in the world happened to your pattern? So this is the pattern that I used on the other leg that's already finished. Um, I had cut around, you know, the whole thing to get my shat body laid out, went through and cut my fringe piece out with all, all the decorative stuff on there. Um, but now that we're doing the other leg, I'm just going to reuse, reuse this pattern. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Um, trace all around it, get it laid out. Make sure you leave that 3 8 to half inch along the upper thigh, as well as the inside of the leg here. So you can roll that over and stitch it down. And I generally just do that first once I get this thing cut out. I roll those edges over there and there, stitch them down, be done with it. Um, kind of saves you from forgetting about it later. So. Once you get your, your shaft leg cut out, then do it twice, lay this over, do a left and a right, and then you can go to cutting it, cutting into this pattern. And what you're left with is your fringe piece that is going to be sewn on top of the shaft body. So you'll have this, you'll lay it on your metallic leather, lay it here, trace it all out, flop it over for the other side. Don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll have two lefts or, or two rights. Um, get all that traced out and then then you've got your shat body cut out both sides ready to go 
your fringe piece ready to go. Um, what these are is about three inches on the bottom fringe and 12 inch fringe going down the leg. Okay, now we have got our shap body cut out. We've got our metallic cut out because again, this is going to be a double fringe. So it's going to lay right on top of the black. Um, next thing to do with this piece is to get all of our cutouts cut out. And after that, there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, personally, I think that glue can get pretty messy when you're, when you're laying the, the metallic down to the shat body. You don't want a bunch of glue residue on your shat body. Um, I use a good double-sided tape. Um, put it on the back side of your metallic. You can stick it down right where you need it. If it's not exactly perfect, you can pick it up, lay it back down. I find that it works really nice to do that. So that's gonna be the next step with our metallic. Um, again, I already did this leg. So I've already got all the pieces cut out for like your leg panel, the yoke, um, reinforcement piece over there. Again, it's a little bit decorative. So what, I'll do that as well. I will put the double-sided tape on the back side of this. That way I can stick it down right where I need it stitch it in place and it's not moving around on me. Um, there will be patterns for that included as well. The metallic, which is behind this leg panel here, um, as well as the top yoke, essentially you're, you're tracing around this piece and adding, I add about 3 eighths of an inch. So you get that little bit extra so you still have a good solid surface to uh, stitch down there. Um, you wanna stitch this to your backing piece first, and then you'll be able to lay this whole piece down after you put in your leg straps. So you'll put those in, rivet your leg straps in, then you can sew this piece down. Um, same over there on the, on the thigh piece with your buckles. You wanna do, do that first. A um, Couple different ways you can do that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this cut out and we're gonna stick it down and then go to, go to stitching. Okay, now that we've got everything cut out and sewn in place, went ahead and sewn around all of this, all the decorative stuff, as well as the inner thigh piece. Um, not put the buckles on yet, I'm gonna do that afterwards. Uh, come over here, the next thing we're gonna do is I went ahead and punched our three holes for our leg straps, and it's very important that those are straight across from where your buckles are gonna be, over here. Um, if they're not, if they're if they're setting too high or too low, that thigh piece is gonna wrap around. It's not gonna hang right. It's not gonna fit well. Um, it might pinch, depends on a couple different factors there. So you wanna make sure that they're parallel or right in line with where your buckles are gonna be. So again, your leg straps are gonna be coming up from the backside. Wanna get those riveted in place. We're gonna do that using a <clears throat> rivet setter and domer. Uh, get those in place, then we can put our leg panel across the top of our rivets to cover those up and stitch this on. Uh, it's very important that you keep your leg straps flipped out of the way when you're sewing around this so you don't you know, sew across your leg straps and it's not gonna look clean and they're, they're just not gonna fit um, quite the way that they should. So we're gonna get a rivet set, sew this piece on and then we're gonna be ready to Put in place our our front strap and then sew on our top yoke. So we'll get that done and we'll be back here shortly. All right, everybody, uh, we are done. I am totally done with these. Uh, I've got the back belt laced in and everything. They are put together and 100 percent finished. So, uh, kind of after that last clip, what I had done was rivet the leg straps in. Sew this leg panel on, keeping in mind on the back side to keep those leg straps flipped out of the way when you're when you're sewing that uh, leg panel on. Um, this way, they they move the way they're supposed to. Um, you know, if they're if they're gonna catch and rip, they need to be able to rip out um, instead of getting hung up on something. So you really don't want to be sewing across the tops of these things. Um, after that, went ahead and got our top yoke sewn on and in place, um, put our front buckle strap in place. I, I sandwich it in between the shat body leather and the yoke. Uh, I feel like that way it's 
It's sewn across the top. I also sink a rivet there. Uh, just a little extra security on that. Um, <clears throat> on our inner thigh piece, I use three quarter inch roller strap buckles. So for these pieces, I cut those at three quarters of an inch by three inches. Uh, you can put these on a couple of different ways. I put it, you know, kind of go across the front side and the back side, sink a rivet in. I like the way that it looks when you see these. You don't have to, you can very easily just put the whole piece on the back side and run a rivet through, you wouldn't even see it. Um, that's why I, I do it, again, probably no uh, right or wrong way necessarily. It's just more about the looks on that. So uh, these things are done. Um, like I said, got that back belt put in. Uh, it just it just laced in. You could uh, add some extra holes here so you could adjust or move it in or out one way or the other if you need to. There's a lot of different ways, hole configurations that you could could do there to lace that in. Um, sometimes I even change it up just to change the look of things. So that's where they're at. That's where they ended up. Pretty happy with these things, and I hope everybody learned something. And I appreciate y'all watching. Thanks a bunch. Tyler with Kirkshaw Leatherworks, Curtis, Curtis Nebraska. Y'all have a good day.